These conversations were recorded in the summer of 2020. We wanted to put artists who'd met through Green Man back in touch as we all try and navigate the fallout of the COVID-19 global pandemic. The results were so good that we couldn't not share them with you too. We hope they give an insight into how artists think, their experiences at Green Man, and what they talk about behind closed doors. Hello, my name's Hazel. I'm an artist living in London. Um, I have a studio in Bermondsey. I work mainly with installation, video, sound, text, sculpture, um, animation and puppetry. Okay, so I'm um, Jennifer Taylor. I um, grew up in St David's in Pembrokeshire in West Wales and I'm now based in Cardiff and I'm doing a, a studio fellowship at G39, or I should be, but it's all delayed at the moment um, because of the lockdown, but yeah, um, with the Freelance Foundation and uh, I work with uh, live performance, installation and film. And um, yeah, I did the commission at Green Man last year. So I'll talk through some of the images of that now. Um, so this was the piece that I made at Green Man last year, uh, which was like a kind of um, mirrored pyramid. So it was mirrored like on all of the outsides and the inside walls as well. So you've got kind of like internal kaleidoscopic kind of reflections inside. Um, and then obviously it like completely changed during the day. So it kind of really, it was almost like a sort of um, lunar cosmic kind of clock that was activated by the darkness. So when the night fell, like at that kind of moment in the festival where everything, everyone thing starts to sort of like enter that kind of mood of people getting excited for the night ahead, um, it kind of like, you know, emerged and started to glow. Um, and yeah, completely changed because the lights were on the whole time, but you only saw, saw them as, as the darkness came. And also it has this kind of um, uh, UV reactive pigments on all the objects inside. So um, it kind of, the, the UV, light reacts with the pigments and so you get this really kind of like um, intense uh, glow that comes from it which is a kind of process I've been sort of developing for quite a while um, yeah and I'll show you a few other images of it um, yeah. from a different angle um, and then this was it in the day so it's completely different so then uh, yeah you had kind of and also I had this sort of like a sort of monolith and the landscape thing about it so you'd have you know, it looks so different from different angles and people would see it from far off and then obviously had the reflections so people would sort of gather around it um, and then people were really sort of shocked by how it sort of changed, I think, at night. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, so that was like a sort of uh, close-up of the inside. And then the inside had these kind of like, um, all these kind of found objects and kind of like um, sort of trashy objects and kind of like, they were sort of like made relics because I'd, I'd been in uh, Montenegro early in the year and like found all these kind of like um, Catholic relics where they'd have like, um, you know, bones um, encased in kind of silver um, objects. And so these are kind of like tin foils or trashy versions of those relics somehow like this strange sort of cabinet of curiosities or something, I don't know, this sort of um, absurd uh, wonderland inside that people kind of stare into. Um, and then it all reflected. It's, it's quite hard to see that in the photographs. You know? um, but yeah, so you get the internal reflections. And then on the front, there was like this one big sheet of um, perspex. So that it was kind of like completely like a vitrine, so it's completely sealed. And then people would kind of like um, look into it. Uh, yeah, so, and I'll, I'll, um, yeah, I can maybe talk through some of the other things that led to that, maybe? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's that little girl just reminded me of seeing the children around it, and I feel like a lot of them really wanted to get inside or just, like, get close, as close to it as possible. Yeah, no, completely. I, I loved, like, the children's reactions to it. And like you were saying, I kind of love the, um, yeah, children's reactions are so important to me. <laughs> kind of just feel like they're the best judge of work, really. Um, <laughs> I, that was why it was so nice to be at a festival, I think, because... You know like when you're in a gallery space it's just in the UK I found there's just not enough like children around really like at openings and things uh, well I, I did a, a residency in Brazil for a while and you know, there's always kids at the openings like watching my performances and their reactions were just so like, immediate and amazing yeah and, like, yeah when you have that so it tends to be quite a sort of dry audience in the kind of evenings of opening gallery space where the, the festivals are so full of kids and you know alive with families and stuff so that was a really nice um to have a slightly different audience I think um, yeah and do you think at festivals people are like more open to seeing weird things as well because they're like out of their routine and comfort zone and stuff? Yeah, I think so. And I think there's just, um, I guess everyone's kind of has um, sort of time to spend with stuff more and kind of are looking for experience of looking to see things. And uh, so, yeah, I think that, um, yeah, and, and I guess that people don't necessarily need, want things to be so kind of, like people are quite kind of, um, used to kind of expecting kind of um, absurd sort of strange things and like maybe they you know they're not so uh, you know 
uh, maybe an explanation isn't is needed in such the same way that people are quite open to kind of different ideas and new things I think I don't know yeah it seemed, I mean, it felt really nice. I, I was really overwhelmed by how many people were like nice and positive, and I know, and just and just kids like things that they just go up to and be like, "Wow, it's beautiful," and stuff like that. Like it was just so, you know, it's just really nice to hear. Um, so yeah, I think it was kind. Of, I think I think I think it became like a bit of a sort of marker point where people would sort of like meet and stuff, like by the pyramid. It kind of had this sort of like little moment where it sort of felt like it became part of the festival because it was kind of in the sort of main area, I suppose, the main sort of walkway, quite near to where the actual Green Man. Um, is where they did do the sort of last thing on the last night. So yeah, it was just opposite for people at the festival. It was just opposite the walled garden. Um, so yeah. Um, yeah, there was quite a lot of space around it, so you could really see it from a distance. And I think because of the sharp angles, it really interrupts like the landscape and everything. Yeah. So it, yeah, I think it definitely had that. Like that had different. Um, yeah, that you could it would and it would appear completely different under different lights at different times and different angles, yeah. and different spaces. So you know, and, and people would see, see it from really far off and be confused by it and then walk towards it and uh, and then there's, there's always this sort of surprise one side that you wouldn't you would imagine it was just like solid block and then you come round and see the front front side. So so yeah, it was a, yeah kind of um, and obviously it kind of like it was called Stargate, so it kind of slightly relates to the. Um, um, Arthur C. Clarke's novels and Kubrick's film, the 2001 Space Odyssey. Uh, so it kind of had that, um, you know, the kind of monoliths, which actually I was reading about really recently. And apparently the original uh, monolith in the Kubrick film was going to be a pyramid. I didn't know this at the time. I, I found this out a few weeks ago. Um, but apparently it wasn't made because and it should have been a 3.6 metre pyramid, which is exactly what this was. And they didn't make it because of the technical difficulties of constructing it. <laughs> That's <laughs> so, just hilarious. <laughs> We made it. Oh my god! Uh, it worked with technical difficulties, and it was quite amazing um, to you know process to go through. But uh, yeah. that's such a funny thing to find out. It's mad. Yeah, yeah. how was the process of putting it? Because it was so huge and so like. It was. It was amazing. But I was so lucky to have um, amazing guides helping me. Uh, so uh, yeah, Alex, who's like amazing carpenter and stuff, um, and just had so much energy. It was just incredible, and like, really helped kind of build all all the construction together and my partner Dan was there and yeah it just and everyone Lexi and Rodri and everyone around was like super helpful and all kind of yeah all came together um but yeah it was a it's like a technically hard thing to do the, the pyramid shape and everything but um I worked out and then yeah I was saying to you that I had worked like in the night then there was I think it was the night before there was a where we kind of the whole thing was kind of structured and then I had to like put all of the things inside so that was just there like really late at night like I stayed up the whole night just doing the interior so then by the morning all the things were in and then we sealed it in uh, which was actually really nice because it just meant that I kind of couldn't get, go back in and kind of fiddle with it or play around with it it was like you know sealed it was sealed it was sealed out uh, which was a really kind of um, nice thing because it was just kind of it was kind of ended whereas I never really have that in my work because I'm always kind of set, uh, sets and I'm always kind of in and out and fiddling them and so the fact that it had this sort of closed kind of monolith feeling about it was kind of yeah a diff slightly different thing for me so yeah, it was really nice. Um, I'll talk through some of the things maybe that kind of led to the piece. So yeah, so this was the this was the moment like when I first started working with UV lights. So I kind of went through this process of developing, working with these pigments um, and how they reacted with it. And this was this was a sort of live performance. I'm somewhere in that sack there in the middle, <laughs> being carried by everyone. Um, and uh, yeah, so this is where it started. And it's got developed quite a bit since then. And it's me in the middle there. <laughs> with everyone around me um, doing this kind of idea with this stone circle sort of thing because I it kind of, kind of followed on from some films I was making with working with the Neolithic stones um, so then it was kind of remaking them as stage sets um, and then sort of going back out into the landscape sort of this new uh, sort of relationship going on um, yeah and then and then I did the uh, Creative Wales uh, scholarship at the British School at Rome so this was like when I was in Rome and then this was maybe the first time that I kind of built a sort of structure like that as a as a stage set performance. Um, and then this was actually like a sort of reenactment of like an ancient Roman fertility festival. Um, so that was me there in the middle kind of doing this kind of weird sacrifice of the goat. <laughs> um, and then this kind of like ritual happened with this kind of milk and the blood of the goat and all the all the men become like Lupakai, like wolf men and all go around Whipping, whipping everyone to make the women more fertile. That was the kind of, you know, basis of the story. Um, and so we did this kind of like, yeah, full on uh, reenactment of it. <laughs> um, and, that, and, this, and this was again with the UV light. So it was kind of like, um, it sort of like was sort of um, changing how I kind of work with them so that, you know, you wouldn't 
you couldn't quite work out. But I think the early pieces were very sort of like within the language of kind of UV sort of um, trance clubs and stuff. Whereas this kind of, I don't know, started to develop into a slightly different use of them. Um, so that the light wasn't directly UV, it was coming from the pigments themselves. So that so all the, the forms have got, got the pigments on their bodies. So everyone's really glow, glowing and it's very slow. Um, so yeah, which then went into the pyramid. And that's the front of the British school where it was. Um, and then I went back to Rome and did a residency. Um, and so this was, this piece kind of really led to the pyramid in a way because this, this was like a glass front. So it was like a vitrine space. So I had a sort of studio space, which was in this really like busy piazza in Rome. And that's my legs in there. It's like doing a performance, like diving, <laughs> diving into it. Um, and, uh, but it was like, there was all, there was these, this, these markets every week, this huge market at Porto Portesi. And it's like, everything just got left in the streets. So there's all of this like trash and clothes and all this stuff. So every week I just collect all of this stuff. And actually a lot of it did end up in the pyramid because I, in the end, I like loved the object so much, that even though they were trash, I ended up like shipping them back <laughs> to, to the UK. So like this, like this, this crossing, there was quite a few um, things that then kind of got kind of transformed more and ended up in the in the pyramid. But this is where, and then, then this was kind of silver foil, and so this is where the kind of between things sort of started, but then led towards the pyramid. Um, uh, yeah, and then sort of doing pieces out on the landscape. This was in um, Tuscany for a show. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, and then this was like the first pyramid thing that I'd done, uh, just just like a few couple of months before Green Man. Um, so this was like a really like mini pyramid that was like made of like, um, you know, just like poles and tin foil kind of thing. Um, so it was like that I had always had this dream of like, you know, making it on a bigger scale, um, which Green Man enabled. So that was great. Um, yeah. And then that was kind of like a set for performance. Um, and then this one, yeah, this one was almost like, uh, kind of a bit like a sort of uh, still life or like staged kind of like religious, religious painting or something as well, which is something I'm kind of working on as well. Maybe that. I'll kind of stage these photographs a lot more because all, all that ever exists of my work is the photograph. So, um, so maybe actually working more on constructing the, the image. So that's what I'm thinking. Um, and this was a Zavadovich collection. Again, this was actually like a, you can't really see it there, but there was a big pyramid, um, which was literally just before Green Man, I think. And we were doing this big kind of bathing ritual. Lilith was there with, covered in like blue paint and then she gets covered in gold and um, you know, this big kind of ritual. Um, and then, so this was the piece I did directly after, so then there's the pyramid, and then this was the piece directly after Green Man. So it was actually the kind of colour and aesthetic of the, of the pyramid kind of like went forward into this. Um, and, the kind of, and then um, I kind of brought all this kind of rubble and stuff in. So this kind of like apocalyptic kind of landscape thing uh, and the kind of you know, trashy relic element came in more. Um, but yeah, and I think like some of the lights and some of the objects, and everyone, I don't know, kind of always kind of mutates into the next one. You can't make that one without making one before, you know, so it's like this kind of weird growing monster that keeps, <laughs> that keeps going. So this was its next kind of incarnation after Green Man. Um, and then we did, we did a performance in there as well. Um, and in fact, I had that dome in Green Man. I remember I was trying to fit it in the pyramid at the end, it just took up too much space. But that yeah, was... yeah, yeah, I do remember. I want, I'm glad you told me that because I wondered where you got all of those objects, but um, I didn't and realise that you recycle them. These are the pieces in Green Man. Yeah, actually, the, yeah. the um, uh, standing stone type relics, they, they, I, I kept them all, like, like I always keep everything I shouldn't. Um, so they all came, so that's, yeah, so they're actually in there in a new garlic. So actually, they, that is the elements from the, the pyramid living on in a new in a new existence in fact i've still got them <laughs> i went to clear out some stuff from my my garage i've got all this stuff um and uh, yeah i was like oh no they're all still here <laughs> but also i was happy to see them so yeah <laughs> <laughs> you're like a magpie still exists yeah i've got this garage that i rent in cardiff but it's just like the guy rents it off just like just <laughs> You just can't understand why I'm keeping all this crazy stuff in there for. <laughs> yeah, no, it's obviously a central thing. You never, yeah. never chuck it away. Kind of like, because it's always like, you know, the works is, someone called it storage and distribution ones, but you're always like taking stuff away, packing it up, taking it onto site, you know, when you're building site specific stuff and then packing it and taking it back and endless van trips and yeah, a lot of moving boxes around. <laughs> So, uh, so yeah, so then this was the, so then this is in that space. So I did a performance that we filmed, um, which was called Star Child, which is again, kind of coming from the Kubrick. Um, so yeah, um, and the dome's back. <laughs> the dome, the, the dome's carried on. Um, yeah, has to get a lot of lives out of it. Um, yeah. 
Um, and then this was the last piece I did literally just before lockdown. Um, in fact, there was supposed to be part, this was Lunar Dawn, um, which again kind of came from that lunar thing from the pyramid, I think. Um, and yes, yeah, so this was Lunar Dawn part, part one, and there should have been Lunar Dawn part two, which never happened because lockdown. Um, and uh, there's this big round stage which is being built, uh, kind of this group of um, curators, Rap Trap, who, Gwenny, who's doing the who's doing one of the cushions, I think. She's, uh, she's one of the people that um, run that uh, curatorial protect, uh, collective. And uh, yeah, they sort of staged this whole series of events at uh, G39. And this was like on the opening night, uh, which is this kind of, um, I don't know, sort of uh, autopsy kind of um, process of cyborgization, where like all of these kind of um, sound pieces were like attached. And then Ian Watson, who's doing the fellowship with me at G39, made all these sound devices, which all got attached to Finn. And he sort of was, you know, rose up as this kind of like newborn cyborg kind of emperor at the end of, <laughs> of the performance. Um, yeah, so there he is with all the, with all the devices onto him. Um, wow. So did the audience walk around and see it from... Well, it, it was this circular stage, like in the middle of the, that was the kind of, um, that's how they, that was their takeover thing, that they built this really beautiful circular stage, which was perfect for me because I've done a lot of things on like sort of stone circles or circular um stages and things um so it kind of fit in really well so then for the opening i covered it in that gold but then it was the rest of the time it was kind of like wood and and it had all different kind of events happening and it had like little residencies so people do a blind date at our blind date dinner in the middle and then they'd, <laughs> uh, and then they'd like to uh, show the work a few days later uh so yeah uh, so it had lots of but it, it stopped halfway we got i think as far as the third residency i think there were three more to go and then we were supposed to be doing a performance to, to finish at the, the closing event so yeah, we'll see. Um, but but all of these are going to go into to films that I'm kind of going to all the take the performers and all these kind of lights and stuff back out into the to the Neolithic stones now. And we're supposed to be making these making these films there. Um, but yeah, lots to do, to do all that. But yeah, so you're using that you're going to use it as a film set because I was thinking it they'd make such amazing films. Yeah, no, definitely. So so the one I showed a bit before, like we did that as a we actually filmed it as a film rather than as a live performance, which was kind of an amazing shift in a way. Although there is something about the kind of live energy of the performance that's kind of really made shift that I kind of love so much, you know, and then the kind of stills that, um, you know, remain from it. Um, but it would be that I've been working with um, Pete Telfer from Culture Colony, who's um, amazing. And uh, yeah, he's really keen that we make these films quite soon. Uh, so it should be exciting to do that. And yeah, hopefully we'll, we'll just all go and stay somewhere in like West in West Wales somewhere, and just like just go out every day and, and shoot these films like all around the kind of um, like the Neolithic stones and all these kind of sites I've got around around Wales. Because um, like you know I've sort of started making films out there on my own, but kind of hard to get you know all groups of performers and stuff out there. But it would be amazing if we can we can do that now. So yeah, but we'll see if when it's locked down, it all comes to an end and we can start up again. So. Yeah, I know. No one knows really. Yeah. So, um, Will you reshow your pyramid from Green Man? Do you think somewhere? Still, I still have it. So, so it's still um, kind of flat packed at G39 at the moment, taking up far too much space in the studio. Um, but so yeah, so I really hope because we built it like that so that it could be um, uh, installed again. Uh, so definitely. In fact, we've got a show um, coming up um, with a sort of fellowship. Um, well, we're not quite sure when, but hopefully the new year. Um, so I was possibly thinking it could be reinstalled as part of that show, um, or I don't know. And also, also I think it could be developed maybe into a, like a really permanent, um, you know, public sculpture somewhere, uh, which would be amazing. That you know, that would be sort of self-functioning um, because that kind of clock thing. But it you know, once the lights are on, it just just takes the daylight and the night to kind of activate the, the glow of it. So I kind of feel like it could work quite well somewhere in a public space in a more permanent way but uh, we'll see that's uh, maybe a bigger bigger project um but yeah but yeah it'd be great to and you know potentially it could be part of a performance as well um and definitely the mirrors like would be used again um I th actually i think some of them were in that, that space that i showed you um i've still got lots of and all the off cuts and stuff as well so yeah i never throw them away so <laughs> i've got all the stuff so it'll definitely like kind of live on in different ways but uh yeah it was uh amazing time installing it at Greenland. It's so fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was uh, so intense, wasn't it? It was. Well. I remember you had a big marquee to make sure that your things were all protected. Yeah, we had to, because we had to have so many tools and stuff to actually like, do all carpentry and stuff. So 
um, and all the objects. And yeah, the weather wasn't great, was it? It was kind of like quite raining at different times. So yeah, that was amazing to have that little, um, uh, what do you call it? Murphy, what's the word? Gazebo. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was really great. Um, yeah. Um, but no, it's, it's a, the whole, I know, you know, but meeting all the, the artists and the artist residency side of it was just like so amazing, I think. And, um, you know, the fact there's such a mix of artists from different places in Wales and England and uh, well, just to meet you properly, like to, to yeah, meet yeah, 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 yeah. It was so nice spending like a solid long weekend and just chatting and going through that. It was stressful, but but fun, stressful. We were in quite a kind of like mad, exhausted state. Um, yeah, it's like literally like what three three days to like build the whole piece, and then suddenly it's festival in the middle of a festival, um, and then we have to take it all down. So yeah, it was pretty and and sort of camping all at the same time. Um, yeah. It was, it was intense but great <laughs> yeah and you got all the energy from the um people like putting up the stages and lighting and stuff like that i loved being around them it was so fascinating yeah um, and that thing of everyone kind of working together to make this whole yeah happen from the, you know and it was great to see it sort of happen from nothing to be there on the first day um i mean obviously not from nothing there was there was already sort of some infrastructure sort of started but you know just to see everything go up so quickly and and also that kind of um i think the skills that uh, people have you know working on festivals more like that you know that things are made to, to you know to be built at a huge scale really quickly um i yeah. felt like I learned quite a lot from seeing that happen like all around me and um you know the scale of the festival to sort of try and hold your hold your space at a festival when like you know there's so much it's so busy and there's so many amazing structures and stuff around you um, so yeah a challenge i think but, it is a challenge yeah i was a bit worried about feeling like it might be dwarfed in the festival but actually that didn't really happen too much yeah no it, no, I, no i felt like all of the pieces like really um yeah definitely had the presence that they they needed in the end and i think they all work really like nicely together i think the across the three the three sites like your piece and then sean's as well that they were all kind of very different but then had this sort of like you know connection running through them and they had that sort of you know all of them had that nighttime activation thing that was so lovely Nice. So, shall I start sharing some of my images from Green Man? Yeah, go for it. Okay. So, this is the installation I made for Green Man last year. Um, it's called Algae. Um, it's made up of wooden flat bits of wood cut out into different shapes and then um, installed on some scaffolding um, on the other side. And then there's a projector on, on this side of the pond, which is projection mapped onto the different shapes. Um, and there's a video which is about nine, nine and a half minutes long that plays across the installation. Um, it doesn't have a narrative, but it has sounds and music and it kind of floats across nine or 10 different scenes. Um, is that positioned around the pond, which is opposite Fortune Falls? So it's like quite near the main stage. Um, and it's quite a big pond. It's such a beautiful image. It's amazing the colours like that respond to the piece. Like it's amazing. And Arca did a very good job. I was super impressed because it's so hard getting um, photos that look good at dusk and when it's like weird, weird lighting. So incredible, really beautiful. Um, that's another shot. Um, so on the left, there's a smaller stage. This one is obviously in the daytime, it just gives a bit of an idea of the location. Um, so it had that amazing backdrop, of the Brecon Beacons. Um, and there's a, I don't know if you can see that child who's kind of camouflaged at the front. Nice little bit of scale. Yeah, it's amazing how it transforms at night. Yeah, I, it was very strange because um, obviously usually I make work for like gallery spaces um, and you control the lighting completely so it was weird allowing people to see it in the daytime when there's no video playing on it um, but yeah we, I sprayed it silver um, and I kind of I think it worked okay I definitely prefer it at night though but that looks amazing it looks it looks so like stained glass or something in the images it's incredible like you just couldn't really tell Oh really? That's interesting. Maybe because the colours kind of reflect its surroundings. There's, there's some sections where it, like it's more of a contrast. There's like um, different scenes. There's like about maybe ten scenes in the video, um, mm -hmm. and some of them are more. Some some of them are like uh, shots from Las Vegas and different interior settings, and then there's these pond ones which are like more connected to the surrounding area. 
Yeah, it was really satisfying putting it around this pond and the projector that they had was amazing. It was like so powerful, the light. So that was like yeah, I remember. quite I a dream. In the, in the forest, like the quality of the projectors was just made such a difference. I don't think I'd seen work on that scale with that kind of quality of projection before. It was amazing. Yeah, 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 I know. And even when it was still quite light around, um, it wasn't completely dark, you could still see the images quite clearly. Um, so I guess what you can't see in the images that I also really like that you could see the silver wood coming through the images a bit like uh, as well like when you looked at it which I don't know how whether that was um you know what came with that decision using that wood because it was really nice to see the grain of the wood sort of in the yeah 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 well it, originally it was kind of a happy mistake because it's actually one of the cheaper types of wood um and then I sprayed it silver and it kind of accentuated that like the shapes of those bits um, and yeah, I think it worked well in the end. It kind of looks a bit like water. I'm just saying there's a bit, you can see it more. Yeah, maybe you can see it. Too. Yeah. So yeah, you could also walk round, right around the pond and see it from like lots of different vantage points. So that was also something quite different. Um, so people, some people were sitting watching it from a side view like that. Um, it's really like you have to be so precise with the projection mapping so if someone like touches something the tiniest bit it will completely go off kilter so I was really paranoid yeah it's crazy I remember you <laughs> work on that a lot to get it right yeah because it kept slightly shifting off and then yeah it just does like naturally um just like by the tiniest amount and um but from that distance it will obviously make a difference um but yeah the first night I was like finish um, the first night when I was finishing installing um, I it just took me so long to get it perfectly onto the shapes I had to like run round from where the projector is changed it up there and then ran around to where the um, sculptures are and then like check like had a look and see it's like to see if it was matching to the shapes and I just yeah probably ran around about like 50 times or something it was, yeah. I remember but then it seems like it really it really settled then it didn't seem like there was any any problems during the festival yeah yeah it wasn't too bad I'd in each like evening I kind of hid behind the um projector box and edit and try like tweaked it a little bit but um but no it was like there was no disasters so that's good nothing fell down <laughs> Um, but yeah, I've definitely never made anything quite at this scale before. So um, yeah, that part of the install is all new. Um, I had a lot of help with, with Lexi with that. Oh, thank you, Lexi. Um, and yeah, working with like scaffolders and stuff like this, because like, usually I make work and it's kind of like the size of uh, the size of something that I can like hold up myself. So um, yeah, this was like a lot more planning obviously you have to go into this um on the end though it's amazing it looks so, like so beautiful and yeah more different angles and the different moments with the light and stuff and, and now seeing it in another phase as the images it's like gives it another kind of life again it's amazing and yeah yeah but and the images are interesting it very much looks like these the videos like superimposed onto the um landscape i think and when you're there, maybe it looks like that when you're there as well. Mm -hmm. no. Yeah, but the quality of the video in the images is something quite special in a way, I don't know. Really. Yeah, this was positioned quite ne close to the main stage, so you could kind of see it out the corner of your eye at some point. Um, and I tried turning the music up for a little bit and you could actually hear it like when you went towards the main stage so that was quite funny because I felt like I was seeking my work like <laughs> to the, into the festival. Your own um, going on. <laughs> yeah exactly because I did have some music as well in the video so it was like um yeah Trojan <laughs> horse sort of thing um but I, yeah, I usually have narratives um and stories spoken or like written on videos that I show for this one I decided not to because I thought um, just realistically you probably wouldn't be able to hear it in this location mm -hmm. um, and also I just wanted to try finding a different way for to tell stories so something which is just more like visual and um, yeah dreamy and using like symbols and motifs and stuff um, rather than having like an actual an actual story happening. Yeah. 
I was kind of remember it being really nice the sound how you could hear it yeah more at other times depending on the time of day and stuff and you sometimes you just have to really listen in or if you're further away and I remember seeing it once like on the last night I kind of went and spent time with your piece and Sean's piece at like four in the morning and it was like really yeah. beautiful you could like really hear the sound and there were still loads of people around watching it then and Sean's piece as well but, like every, it was packed like everyone was in the forest at four in the morning yeah 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 <laughs> Okay, so it was really nice that kind of people sort of took those sort of private moments to go and see and um, I guess your pieces were kind of like in more sort of um, site specific sort of areas a bit and so people were, were you know really there with them which was nice. Yeah that's so nice yeah I guess it's like the time when the music stops as like Lexi mentioned that's one of the nice things about having the uh, installations going on throughout the night yeah, um, there's less going on around. Um, but yeah, no, I love seeing people sit there watching it. It's just, it's interesting seeing how everyone reacts because um, obviously some people, it's more like, oh, look at that weird thing and then walk past. Um, some people are very confused. I don't know, but, but then some people would just sit and watch it. It's just really interesting, yeah, seeing how people no, respond to it. It's really nice because, you know, we were staying at the festival, so then we could just become a part of the crowd and kind of watch, you know, what, people wouldn't know that who we were and you could just watch people's reactions in such a sort of natural way which is really lovely yeah 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 exactly that wouldn't really happen would it if you don't really sit in the corner of a gallery and see what people are doing <laughs> um but yeah when i because i had to like um edit quite a lot of the projection mapping software i was using and every time i stood there doing it people would come over and i think they thought i was performing or something or like something was about to happen because people would come over and ask me things but <laughs> But that is, that's nice, <laughs> a bit embarrassing too. Um, yeah, I quite like having something which is recognisable and friendly to like kind of ground you or, or also like it's memorable as well. Yeah. Um, for the weird world that is inside of it. And I think that makes it more accessible to like children and things as well. Like, it's mm. like the sort of bit that draws you in. Sort of. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do really care what children think of my work, but um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, me too. They're the best audience. Wow, that, yeah. It looks, yeah, that looks so like, I don't know, like, yeah, like stained glass on the, like literally on the black, like cut out. So this is, this is um, a shot, for, it's a screenshot from the actual video on Premiere Pro. Right, okay. Um, so, because I had to like make all the masks first. Oh, okay. Um, and then basically plan out exactly how it was going to be projected mm -hmm. and stuff. Um, but I just showing this because that little creature, <laughs> that's like a little so this was like a little algae creature so that's why the title is called algae um mm -hmm. and it kind of traveled through lots of strange different dreamscapes and spaces um so it got dropped into an aquarium in las vegas at one point and then some wings came and like took it off to this like heaven place and then it went into the sun and inside a kind of gut with lots of gut bacteria things going on so yeah it went on like this journey with this algae the video. um there was that time when i sat and watched all through the night and yeah i can remember his journey <laughs> and then in this in this image it's like um the space is the actual structure so it's meant to like kind of go around the different areas and there's like tiny ones there um i usually make like characters or motifs or like use animals or creatures or something um, as like the center point of the stories or like a guide to take you through different narratives and stuff um, and then I generally like giving them a stage so this was like the ultimate stage for the character because it's literally in a in a festival mm. those are other stages for him <laughs> yeah exactly he's very happy and that was just another scene of these light these light kind of creatures yeah. mm. Mm. Yeah, it's really nice seeing it with those images as well. Like, you know, they're kind of really powerful. As, you know, just as the cutouts that yeah, as you forget that that's how you make the video. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, so I mean, other people do it differently, but I find this just the easiest way, really, because you can just visualize it, the whole thing together. Mm -hmm. um, and because the projector was so good, it, you can just play it out of one projector, so that was fine. And what program do you use for editing? Um, so for the like the video, it's Premiere Pro. Um, what's that one called? After Effects, oh, Cinema yeah. 4D for the animations um, for the 3D ones, um, and then Mad Mapper for the mapping. Right. Um, and then Logic.
magic with the sound. So yeah, so this is something um, I made like a year, well, no, was it like eight months or something before doing the green man thing. So I've been like um, researching different like landscape gardening and, and ponds and stuff in London. So that's why I was particularly interested in showing um, the work at, around that pond. So that was quite exciting getting to use one in real life. And that was in the Jewwood, uh, the survey show, right? That one. Yeah, so this was a group show, yeah, at Jerwood. Um, I saw I was there, yeah, I saw it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, then we went to G39 and did it there. Oh, yeah, yeah, and then I was away then. I can't remember where, I think I was back in Rome, so I missed the whole of that show when it was in G39. Oh, I see. Yeah, G39, it was like, they had, like, lower lighting, so it kind of more lit from the bottom. Um, but, yeah, so this is different. I, I often, like, try to, like, make, like, fake... Um, or like give an illusion of a landscape or a, a like a natural space in galleries obviously using other uh, mediums like um, polystyrene or water or in this case there are some real plants but so um yeah it was nice i kind of did the opposite with the green man thing um yeah. which was quite fun um yeah this was this is a still from a video i made um lot before green man as well um and this is, i just like this shot because it's the a, like the kind of real and a fake thing meeting and i just think that the Great. green man installation was basically yeah. that was one of the elements to it um <laughs> it's an amazing image <laughs> um and then this was also kind of related i think to the green man piece um so this was something i made at turf projects in 2018 and um it came out of a research trip to las vegas and the nevada desert um in this national park where there were lots of um, fossils of aquatic dinosaur mm -hmm. bones um anyway so i had lots of stories about las vegas and, but i think like yeah that trip definitely has um made an impact on my work so ever since then i mean um, an amazing trip so good it was um uh, with this it's called the boys travel scholarship which they give out to some people at um slet after slade so it was after i graduated my ma mm -hmm. um yeah and it was just such it was amazing wow <laughs> um is, is that the first time then you, you started using the ponds that's when the water came in yeah yeah um that was yeah. great uh, and so then when you when you started using the ponds, had you already seen the site at Greenman? Did you already know that was going to happen? Or did that just fit in? Perfectly? No, it was like a really happy accident. It was so weird. It's like fate, like me and Pond. <laughs> Sorry, that's so weird. <laughs> I think it's very hot. <laughs> so me. Um, so yeah, no. So this, so this was the first time like, using water. So it was meant to kind of, depending on what was happening on the video, it was meant to shift between looking like a pond of water, like you might see in the casinos and the gardens when they have like fake little pond areas and stuff made out of polystyrene and things um so then maybe looking like a mirage in a, a desert um or there's another part where there's a golf course projected onto the screen so then it would look like little areas of a golf course um but then after that um i did a residency thing with southwark park galleries which is a collaboration with two other people um and we had a kind of task to make something which related to the park, um, Southwark Park. So, um, and there's a massive pond in there. So we ended up thinking about that in that installation too. Um, and then the pond I made at Jerwood and then this one, yeah, it felt like a good, but this is time to stop now. So this is like, <laughs> well, there was no, also, no more. There was also some in the, um, your sh amazing show. Oh God, yeah, I wasn't meant to do, I, I gave myself rules and then I broke it. But that was actually a stream, so it's a little bit different. Yeah, there were narrow bits, but that was great. Yeah. It was amazing. Show. And it seemed like that show kind of really led on from the Green Man in a way, kind of like the cutouts and the way the projections worked and stuff. And the yeah, uh, yeah, definitely in a scale too, because it was a bit bigger. Um, yeah. No, it looked amazing in that space. I loved that show, as I was telling you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so nice. Um, yeah, that show also, actually, yeah, at Green Man, I felt like I wanted 
to stop um, exploiting ponds. <laughs> and also I got, you know, when you feel like it's sometimes the end of things, so I got quite um, sick of the kind of animation I was doing. So then ever since then, I've wanted to, um, so I've been trying to like work with puppetry as a different way of like creating these creatures and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's in that sense, Green Man. Amazing. Yeah. And next, what's, what are you working on now? Um, I've been doing a fellowship at Film London, um, <laughs> Film London Artists and Moving Image Network. And um, so like I've started researching that last year and I'm now trying to like realise it a little bit more it involves filming and um, things kind of had to pause because of COVID because um, I was meant to be going on like a research trip and filming um things in america so obviously that's not happening now um so yeah i'm trying to find other ways to kind of realize that um and i'm doing um an installation in dusseldorf in february which oh, yeah. i'm trying to plan at the moment um yeah it's a big space it's a group show so they're going to be making rooms for everyone um so, yeah, so I, I'm trying to make something where you can see both sides of it. So you'd enter, the, it's kind of like a massive rib cage sort of structure um, with like semi-transparent materials. Um, and yeah, you see the back first and then you walk around and the inside is more like sculptural and interior and kind of, yeah. Amazing. So, that's the yeah. plan. No get back to it after this whole weird lock time, <laughs> lockdown time. I know, yeah, 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 it's weird even yeah. probably thinking about this, I have to say, yeah, I had a, just kind of stopped yeah. a bit, being productive at all, but yeah, I need to get back on it now. 